I just spent the last year without using money. And when I talk to people about this sometimes and the, the possibility of like moving beyond the monetary system, blue, this, this limited way of, of categorizing the world so that some people get very, very rich and most people get very, very poor, they say that it's not a possibility that the powers that be or that the forces that be won't allow us to do that. And in so doing, we just admit our own enslavement to a system that doesn't work for our highest good. By exploiting the workers, by hanging on to outdated imperialist dogma, which perpetuates the economic and social differences in our society. You know, we've still got people who are poverty-stricken, so obviously uh, this ain't working exactly right. The, the way that we've got working right now, which is um, ending up in, in record numbers of, of homeless people in the country, of people, houses being foreclosed on, on the disparity between the rich and the poor, and, you know, just so many issues with it. The richest one percent of this country owns half our country's wealth, five trillion dollars. One third of that comes from hard work, two thirds comes from inheritance, interest on interest accumulating the widows, the idiot sons, and what I do, stock the real estate speculation. Catastrophic climate change and widespread poverty are signs of the normal functioning of the system. And that doesn't sit well with me. That's not good enough for me. I think we can do better as, as a people. For me, there there's, seems to be this possibility of there being another way. Do you know how stupid that sounds? There is only one holistic system of systems. One vast and immane, interwoven, interacting, multivariate, multinational dominion of dollars. It's the money! Where's the money, Lebowski? Show me the money. Show me the, the money! money! For the good old American life. For the money, for the glory, and for the fun. Mostly for the money. Where's my money? We just want the money! The motive is always money. We've got to have Money. I play for money. Right, money. But money wouldn't work if people couldn't be fooled. <laughs> Just remember, money buys nothing. There's more to life than a little money, you know. Baby, you are so money, and you don't even know it. Money is not an objective reality. It has no objective value. Take this green piece of paper, the dollar bill, look at it. It has no value. You cannot eat it, you cannot drink it, you cannot wear it. But then come along these master storytellers, the big bankers, the finance ministers, the prime ministers, and they tell us a very convincing story. Look, you see this green piece of paper? It is actually worth 10 bananas. And if I believe it, and you believe it, and everybody believes it, it actually works. I can take this worthless piece of paper, go to the supermarket, give it to a complete stranger whom I've never met before, and get, in exchange, real bananas, which I can actually eat. Well, money's an agreement. You know, it doesn't have value all by itself. It has value because people agree that it has value. Money, in fact, is the most successful story ever invented and told by humans because it is the only story everybody believes. Not everybody believes in God, not everybody believes in human rights. Not everybody believes in nationalism. But everybody believes in money and in the dollar bill. Take even Osama bin Laden. He hated American politics and American religion and American culture, but he had no objection to American dollars. He was quite fond of them, actually. Money is, is simply a representation of value, and not a very good representation at that. And in this system, if you don't own or buy a lot of stuff, you don't have value. All these little pieces of money, these dollar bills that we create, they're just pieces of art. And some people print those art out and they sell it to us, and we believe that that's really what value is. It's not. In this series and the accompanying book, I'll be looking at how our monetary system is working and how it is affected by our beliefs on sex, sexuality and gender, politics and power, and our ideas on faith and religion. It's a big story to tell, so be sure to subscribe, don't miss an episode, and order your copy of Money, Sex, Power, and Faith, The Convergence of Culture.